In this video, I'm going to show you uh, two caps that I use to do some major makeovers or transformations. On the left, you see the uh, 1939 Peterbilt that is made by American Highway Legends in 164 scale. And on the right, you see a white cab over that is made by Winross. First, we're going to focus on the Peterbilt because I had somebody request to show how I go from a Peterbilt to a Kenworth using this particular cab. Uh, first, I'm going to show you, though, how I use it to go to an auto car. Now, this particular truck was originally uh, a straight truck with a single axle drive on the back. I uh, modified it with the rear end from a Winross trailer so that it made it into a tandem axle and I custom fit it with a fifth wheel uh, transforming it into the, this tractor which I have in a display case pulling a log trailer. Now to go from this to a, uh, an auto car there's uh, different styles of auto cars you can use this cab for. I used it you probably recall in my uh, straight dump truck video you saw the yellow and black auto car cab fitted to a dump body. That was one of my uh, first ones I did. I, I sold a couple of these years ago. Uh, here's another auto car that I did. This one I think was a, an early 40s model auto car that I got off of the internet, off of Google. And uh, the difference here is this was a single axle chassis. And to go from the Peterbilt to an auto car takes a lot of filing. For example, of course, on this one, I added the integral sleeper, but there's a lot of filing that goes on in the cab area here to round this, make it more rounded. And there's a lot of filing that goes on in the windshield to open up that windshield a little bit more like the auto car uh, style is. And then there was some work, of course, that had to go into the hood area. I did some filing, a little bit of narrowing, and then I had to custom make a grill for this. What you see here are staples that I made, staples and a paper clip that I used to make the grill area. And so I went from this uh, Peter, Peterbilt and made this auto car, early 40s auto car. And I took an old Ertl trailer she used to be a box trailer, actually. Actually, this one was a, was a Windrush trailer. But I ground the front round, and I took one of these sides. These uh, come off of a Windrush trailer. And these things are great. These pieces of sheet metal are great for forming into other uh, accessories to put on other trucks that I've made. I'll show you that here in a minute. But I also use that to create the sides to this, rounded, rounded front end. So it gives it that old uh, 40s flatbed trailer look being pulled by an early 40s auto car cab. Now another auto car that I did was this one. This was actually one of the first auto cars I did. And this one's going through, has gone through a few transformations. But the, the difference, the big difference on this is it's a, it's a little newer auto car than the 40s. This one's probably a late 40s, early 50s body style. It, it also has the integral sleeper. But I also took the, the sheet metal I showed you from the sides of a Windross trailer. And I, I formed these fenders to give it a different look. But these two cabs, these two cabs were identical, the same cabs, but now uh, transformed into another auto car tractor. And I decided to put the half round dump on this truck. So this is what is now displayed in my cabinet, this auto car with the half round dump. Now this style of uh, auto car tractor also looks very nice with uh, a van trailer, uh, a low belly van trailer, like a moving trailer. It turns out pretty sharp. Now to show you what I did with a uh, Kenworth, making a early mid fifties Kenworth 
Again, it takes a lot of filing. And uh, filing around the windows, around the cab. Again, I, I get my photos off of uh, eBay, off of a Google search. And this is about a mid 50s long nose Kenworth. I use the lights off the fender or the bumper here, and I just relocate them on the fenders. And you can see that there's more filing that is done on the hood. I uh, formed a piece of plastic actually, or I think this one might've been aluminum, a little piece of aluminum to extend the hood out a little more, making this into a uh, long nose, mid fifties Kenworth with a pipe load on it, custom trailer on the back, uh, painted to match the tractor. But uh, there is a mid fifties Kenworth. Originally I had this pulling a tanker trailer, which was really sharp, but I needed the tanker trailer. It was a Winross tanker trailer. I modified that uh, into a dual Peterbilt, the dual Peterbilt tanker. So this is the uh, mid one mid fifties Kenworth that I've transformed from that uh, AHL Peterbilt. Let's go ahead and put this one back. Back it in there. And then the other Kenworth I did is red and black one, pulling a New England or the England uh, trailer, refrigerated trailer. Again, this truck is very similar to the other Kenworth. The uh, blue Kenworth had a custom grill that I used right out of the Peterbilt. I just trimmed it down to fit. This one I made more of a Kenworth grill using plastic parts. The piece around here is from a paper clip. And then I had some chrome sheets that I, I used to finish off the grill. And uh, this, this truck here went through several transformations. Uh, I This truck, I think I started out, it was uh, green. Went to green to black. Uh, it was gray, white, white and red. But now uh, I, I have it in the red with black fenders and I think that's pretty sharp. And I ended up coming across a, a deal on some trailers of which the England trailer was included. And so I thought that looked pretty nice with that Kenworth, the old, old 50s, mid 50s Kenworth pulling that uh, England reefer. So I really enjoy using, I have fun, I should say, I have fun using this cab and turning it into a completely different uh, tractor trailer. Now this one here, I also have a lot of fun with uh, modifying this. Now, of course, uh, an easy custom is just to cut the cab down, make a day cab out of it. That, that's pretty straightforward. Not much change there. It turned out to be a, a nice little tractor that I have pulling a set of Pacific Intermountain pups. So that's a nice little tractor. I put uh, plastic in there for the windshields. Same thing I did on, on this particular cab over. Now, um, I didn't have any Dodge cab overs at the time. And this one's, it's a little rough, but it, it still turned out pretty, pretty decent. I made this cab over, single axle, single drive axle cab over, Dodge. Uh, and I have it pulling a car carrier with Mopar cars on it. And for the most part, it turned out to be a pretty slick looking little truck. Not one of my favorites though, but it, it's a nice little truck. You can see uh, the difference in the cabs. I'm gonna show you the next one though, uh, to help you appreciate how much filing goes into it. This uh, GMC Cracker Box, pulling a Winross trailer. Now this GMC Cracker Box is mounted on a DCP chassis with the wheels, uh, custom uh, exhaust stacks on it. 
but you look at the difference in these two calves. You can see the filing that is involved and in getting this smooth, taking some of these uh, corners off, some major changes in the, in the front end. This whole area has to be filed down, at least from here up, it has to be filed smooth. This has to be filed back a little bit. You don't want to uh, get rid of too much detail because you still want uh, where the lights are. You just have to move them over. So that gets filed out. And then uh, new places put in for the headlights. And this one has a custom grill on it. Custom bumper, custom grill. Uh, nice little interior put in there. I also put the plastic in for the windshields. But that's, that's a, a big, big change, big makeover, big difference going from a cracker box. The other, the other thing I had to do was you, you file this at an angle. You see where the angle is. You look at a photo, see how it's angled, and you file that angle in there. And that gets you a decent looking little cracker box, GMC cracker box. Now, I did one of these back in the 90s. And I sold it on eBay. I know it's still floating around out there somewhere. It was green and white. And that was a nice little tractor. I wouldn't mind having that one back, but I don't. And so I made another one, same thing, another cracker box out of that same cab. But I, uh, I did it differently. I, I made a, a, a bumper and a grill that uh, is more like that, that you will find on these old cracker box trucks but there again these were identical cabs go from a white cab over to a gmc cracker box and of course this one here also is pulling a uh, win ross crate load so those are what i have in my uh, display cases now this next one i'm gonna first thing i'm gonna show you um is a truck from White Line Fever. Now, what's interesting is the actual truck from the movie White Line Fever from uh, the early 70s, it was a Ford 8,000, Ford 9,000 cab over, I'm sorry, Ford 9,000 cab over. And of course, you're not going to find the original, uh, a 1975 uh, Ford 9000 cab over in 164th scale. You're going to find it in 187th scale, and you're going to find, uh, I think, um, you'll find a model kit in 125th scale. But I, I looked at all the other scales and nothing, but I know Ertl and Neo make this, um, it's about a, a mid 80s, about an 85 Ford 9000 cab over. And I've seen another one of these as I was surfing on uh, the internet someone did another one of these and you know have to, i have to admit uh, the other one uh, you'll find you type in uh, blue mule semi and you'll see the other one it's very close to this um, so i i used um Ertl's 164 scale ford 9000 to make this blue mule semi and i have it pulling a DCP 40 foot box trailer with the uh, Red River decals on it. But that that's a sweet looking little truck. I mean, I, I really like that, but uh, it still was not the movie truck. So I uh, ended up getting a, a decent deal on another of these uh, white cab overs. And I, I got it in a bundle off of eBay. There was three tractor trailers and uh, one was this white, uh, this 9,000 Ertl and one was a cab very similar to this different paint, paint scheme. Well, I'm gonna show you, I, I, I bit the bullet and did a lot of filing, a lot of cutting and made my mid 70s Ford 9000 Blue Mule Semi. And this is what it turned out to be. Now the chassis and the trailer are a DCPs. They came as one unit. So I took this cab 
I should say this cab and did a lot of work on it. This entire front end had to come off. So I had to take that entire front end off and, and uh, put a, a piece of metal in there to get this filed all the corners off, file the flat, the top flat to get this nice looking Ford 9000 from the mid 70s. And it tilts so that you can see the uh, diesel engine underneath inside. So that turned out pretty sweet. Take that trailer off. That turned out to be a couple of nice looking rigs. So I'm pretty happy with those. So uh, again, having some fun and coming up with some ideas. I, I still have some ideas that I want to do down the road. Some different uh, other movie trucks. I've got a couple other movie trucks already in the works. But I, I hope you like these. I, I hope you think they're as cool as what I think they are. And uh, again, hey guys, uh, have fun with your diecast collections. As you can see, I, I have quite a few one-of-a-kind trucks, custom trucks in my collection. And that's what makes my collection personal. So personalize your collection out there. Uh, make up some, make some custom trucks with what you have. You know, some of these trucks are pretty cheap. Very inexpensive to get. Some of these Ertles you can get, pretty inexpensive. The AHL you can get, pretty inexpensive. These uh, white cab overs, pretty inexpensive. So, hey, have fun.